Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Pumpkin Becky. In this week's video, we're going to be having a look at my dahlias, how I grow them in containers and what I need to do to them right now. Let's get started. We're right at the end of June and the dahlias have put on lots of growth. Well, most of them have. We'll come back to that. It's time now to do something to them which seems entirely nonsensical, but actually it will help them to flower and hold themselves better through the rest of the season. And we're also going to be doing an unboxing. I grow all my dahlias in pots and there's several really good reasons for that. The first one is I haven't got space in my flower beds to put these in every year. <laughs> I grow a lot of things in my flower beds and they're all fairly permanent planting. Sometimes I've got room for the odd annual to poke in here and there, but to be honest the, the beds are pretty, pretty full. I also can't be bothered with lifting them, that's just not my bag. I like to plant something and leave it and let it do its thing. The joy of planting them in pots is that I can, at once the first frost has come and blackened all the leaves, I can just cut that growth off and lift up the entire pot and put it straight in my unheated greenhouse. I can even leave entire mixed containers planted up over winter. This really sweet little Nemesia lives in this pot with this white pompon dahlia all year round. I just take the whole plant into the greenhouse and they both overwinter quite happily. This Nemesia is probably three, possibly even four years old. It's a shame because we treat these things like they're annuals and they're not. They, they can go on and on. They just might need a little bit of protection over winter. I also find it's quite good protection from slugs and snails. I tend to use quite tall pots and that seems to help the tubers get themselves off to a flying start before the slugs and snails start to come out and try and eat them. I have noticed I've got a little bit of black fly on some of these so I can easily come in with some soft soap solution and give them a good squirting all over and kill those off. But today's big job is actually pinching out these plants. Now it seems really counterintuitive, you've spent the last 3-4 months growing these plants up to this sort of size and they're about to flower and then you're going to come along and pinch the tip out which is where the flower is going to be. But by pinching it out now what we're encouraging is those main stems to branch. It makes a shorter stockier plant and it also means there's more points for it to flower from. It's a win-win. You just have to be brave and do it. Here is where I actually performed this about two weeks ago. So the central stem, which was coming up here, has been simply cut and it has activated the shoots either side of it to push. Not the leaves, not these stems, but these in here. You just need a pair of scissors secretaires and make the decision are you going to bring them right down maybe to this junction here which is about 10 inches above soil level or are you going to play it a bit safer and come up here because we're early in the season I'm probably going to come down to this how many sets of leaves is that this is the second junction I'm probably going to come down to the second junction if you watch my video about extending the season, which there will be a link to, you'll notice that I cut slightly more conservatively to extend the season rather than coming right back hard because there isn't the time to push much more growth. So I'm just trying to maximise what I've got rather than 
making it bulk out more, if that makes sense. So here's the stem I want to cut. Here is the internode that I want to cut at. But I want to cut just above it. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of room for a little bit of die back. But a nice crisp clean cut across. So yes, I've cut some flowers off, but here I have dormant buds which will bush out and produce more flowers. Now we're going to look at cutting this one. The first internode happens at about the same height above soil level as on the stem we've just cut, but the second one is significantly lower than that first one. So I'm actually going to continue on up and clip off here, just above that third internode position. When you're in a border situation, it could be quite useful to stagger the cuts. Um, it will help give you a variety of heights and sizes in the border. In pots, it's less important. I'm now going to prune this one off. My first internode is really low. Here's the second one, which is somewhere in between those two. But it's high enough. I'm going to cut that off there. So there we go. We have pinched out another dahlia. I've got lots more to do. <laughs> You can see here on this mysterious pink dahlia that I have, I have patches of black fly starting to reproduce. By pruning this fresh new growth off, I am removing the tasty bits that the black fly really like to feed on. But I could also give this a spray with, uh, I say, a really dilute soft soap solution. Just a little bit of hand soap in water in a squirty bottle is usually enough to break the surface of these beasts and kill them off. If you find ants crawling up and down plants, that's usually a good indication that you've got black fly somewhere or aphids of some description, and it's really worth having an investigate to see where they are and what you need to do to remove them. This is creme de cassis. Brilliant. That's a really important job to have got done. It's really going to set these plants up for the growing season. I will now follow along and give them a bit of extra fertilizer and a good drink because even though I watered these last night, they're feeling pretty dry. Now to the exciting unboxing and the bit of backstory that leads up to this. Here before me you can see two pots. This one is meant to contain the luscious cafe au lait dinner plate variety dahlia. And this one is meant to contain a semi-cactus style, burgundy red, beautiful dahlia called Nuit d'Ete. Clearly, it's none of those things. It's not burgundy red and it sure as heck isn't a semi-cactus style. This is a single. I have no issue with single flowering plants. Most of the plants in my garden are single flowers because it makes the nectar and pollen more available to bees and pollinating insects, which is really important. So there is a little bit of a story that goes with these plants. Last spring, when normally you would be out at the garden centre buying your plug plants and annuals and bedding plants for your summer display, we were obviously in lockdown and garden centres were not open and all the online stores were so busy, so overwhelmed that they were having to stay open for a couple of hours and then shut and sort of re-establish where they were 
and then they would reopen again at the crack of dawn in the morning and do the same thing again, have to shut. You couldn't even look at what was online and what might be available. They just had to shut the website. I did eventually manage to get onto the website of a company called Van Muen, who I was pretty sure I remembered my mother buying from many years ago. I didn't remember there being anything negative about them. So I went ahead and I bought all sorts of things. Um, I bought... I remember buying two sorts of tomatoes. Um, I remember buying various ornamentals. And the ornamentals arrived pretty quickly. Uh, there was osteospermum, stocks, various other things. The stocks got stuck in the post over a bank holiday weekend. And when they arrived, they were yellow and they I potted them up, I looked after them as carefully as I could, and they just died. The delivery date for the tomatoes kept pushing out and out, even though they'd said they were in stock when I ordered them. When they did finally arrive, they were dead. They were dead. <laughs> also, one of the osteospermums that I had planted was meant to be one called Happy Gaia, which was meant to be a lovely big purple one, and it turned out to be a strange white and purple spider type so the petals were sort of they're pinched in with a little flare at the end they were they were nothing spectacular for me they weren't what I wanted and they didn't work in my hanging basket and by the time they'd flowered and I realized they were wrong Famuyan had no stock of the right one so yeah the customer service team were very helpful very communicative and they did offer me refunds in the form of store credit and vouchers which I, I didn't want I was getting really fed up with the plant quality I was being sent yes I know we were in the middle of lockdown there was no staff there was it was awful for everybody I get it but I was at the point where I didn't want anything else from them I was done and these vouchers had an expiry date on them. <laughs> Fine, so you've got no stock, but you want me to spend my money with you, spend my vouchers with you now, when you've got nothing. What am I going to do? Uh, so I looked on the website to see if they had any non-plant things, things that they couldn't die in the post. I would have I would have gone for anything at that point. But they also had nothing in their normal shop stock. So my frustration was increasing and I thought, right, dahlia tubers. I'll get dahlias for next year. They can't mess that up. They'll be fine. So I went ahead and I pre-ordered Nuit d'Ete, Café au lait and Crème de Cassis. The Crème de Cassis has come up and is doing okay. So it's a nice healthy plant, looking, looking fine. But Café au lait did not and Nuit d'Ete is fundamentally wrong. The main part of the plant that arrived with Crème de Cassis was like this and it fell off instantaneously the tuber that was attached to it was rotten and that was never going to grow anything also in the bag were two other tubers these two tubers have a little root on them but nothing else they're firm they're green but they don't have a growing point on them, so they aren't doing anything. I have continued to leave them in the soil. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what to do with them. Then I was on the phone with my sister-in-law the other day, and she said, oh, Sarah Raven's got a sale on at the moment, and the dahlias are in the sale. So while I was on the phone, I quickly placed an order. 
Now rather than tubers, these are growing plants. I bought two varieties in three litre pots. They arrived this morning. Ooh. Ow. Now in fairness to Sarah Raven, these plants weren't actually meant to ship until the end of July. Um, Cafe LA is a very popular dinner plate dahlia. Very popular indeed. <laughs> but what they have sent me is the other one, which is Happy Single Princess. So Happy Single is the series name, Princess is the variety. Um, yeah. And the other one will ship when it's available. So it's a nice big box, which I thought, ooh, that must mean they're both in there, but they're not. It's certainly very well packed. Lots of room around the foliage to remove the chance of breakage. There is a piece of cardboard at the bottom which has the pot slotted into it, and there's brown paper underneath as well. Yeah, that's, that's some great packaging. And there she is, a really nice, stocky little plant. Lovely. They've also sent out a nice, non-glossy instruction leaflet uh, to cover multiple varieties of things. This one is cut flower seedlings, sweet pea seedlings, container plants, perennials, biennials, tender perennials, roses, shrubs, climbers, kitchen garden plants and bulbs in the green. When you get your dispatch note they also give you a link to this so that you can download it beforehand and be ready. Which is actually quite a good idea because if you need to get something in particularly to plant your plant in or the right side of compost or the right sort of feed, at least you've got time to go and do that ahead of the plant arriving. Our potted three litre dahlias are sent out in late spring ready for planting out. If the conditions are not favourable, plant them somewhere light and cool but frost free. We're fine, <laughs> we're about to go into July. It says if you're going to put it in a container choose one with at least 30 centimetres diameter and depth for optimum growth. And she says, pinch out the tips of the main shoots once the plants reach a height of about 40 centimetres. It does also say you need to remove all but five shoots sprouting from the tuber to encourage bushy growth with lots of flowers. I've gone and grabbed myself a planter. In the bottom, I have my eCoco cocoa fibre drainage layer for pots and baskets. So on top of that is now some peat-free compost and I want to make sure that my plant is going to sit at about the same height it is in its pot here. So I'm actually going to just take a little bit of that compost out to the sides. Put my hand around the crown of the plant turn it upside down and lift away the pot. That came out really nice and easy. And there we go. Pop that into the pot and then fill up around it. So that's my dahlias all back where they should be, rearranged, fed, pinched out, 
ready to go and hopefully my new little happy single princess will get away really nice and quickly. Right, that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to rate, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.